Hi everyone! It's been a while since my last video. Um, it turns out it's kind of hard to vlog about being a medical student and being a medical student at the same time. So I've been a little bit busy. I took my final for my biochem course and I got an A! So yay! I know what you're wondering. Marigold, why are you so dressed up today? I'm trying to stop. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I have a talent show thing after this and I'm in it so kind of had to dress in all black and look snazzy so but before I go to that I'm going to go ahead and do this highly requested video how do I study and this is going to be super super like completely genuine completely honest because what works for me may not work for you but I don't really know what else to tell y'all except for what works for me so first thing to start with is what do you need okay you need a laptop but to study, I need a giant table. I need a giant table so that I have tons of space so that my table can look like this. Yep, this is basically what studying looks like for me. I personally like to study at home uh, and I like to study at coffee shops and Denny's or places like Denny's that have Wi-Fi, have a table, and have food. Uh, because, first of all, I don't think anybody can work super well without coffee. It says cappuccino, like a ch cappuccino. Isn't that like, who thought of that? <laughs> that is why I like working at those places. I don't like working at school, studying at school because there aren't snacks. And I'm a stress eater, so I kind of need that energy coming in. When it comes to things like anatomy especially, colored pens are absolutely like a must for me. I use them everywhere to draw everything. One important thing that you need to study is time. If you don't have time to, even if you went at the speed of light, as far as, as fast as you could study, then you can't get through everything and you just can't know all the material and you won't get in 100, let alone get an A, let alone pass, or whatever the case may be. So allow yourself enough time to study. Even when you have all of the things that you need to study, you set up enough time, you have the colored pens, you have your notebooks, you have your notes. The key to getting on 100. Now, I know I keep saying getting on 100 and a lot of you are like, ooh, that's crazy. Like, why does she wanna get 100? Why don't you just wanna get an A? Okay, you gotta aim high. You gotta aim as far as you can go. You aim to get in 100. And the way you get in 100 is you know everything. You know all of the material. If you know all the material, you have to get in a hundred. Let alone get an A. Let alone pass. You don't know how many times I've been. I'm about to take the test. I'm in the auditorium with everyone else and somebody comes up to me and asks, hey, what is that basic concept in the class that we learn? And I'm like, how do you expect to do well in this class if you don't even know that? So if you know everything, you don't have to worry about that. Now knowing everything or taking the test once you know everything is the easy part. But I know you're all wondering, how do you know everything? Because that's the hard part. I know some of you are still thinking, okay, you know what? I'm going to turn this video off right now because I'm not one of those students who knows everything. I'm someone who struggles learning, so this video doesn't pertain to me. No, 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 no. I am not a gunner. I am not some extraordinary, like, savant from, like the Discovery Channel or whatever. I am a normal average person and you can too know everything and you can score in 100. You have to know that. If you don't think you can, you might as well turn this video off because the confidence is in there and I don't know what else to say. But, and I know I keep switching positions, I'm sorry. Um, but if you know that you can, then we can continue with this video. And the, the rest of this video is all about how do I get to put all the material that my teacher taught me into my head. For things like anatomy, where you have to understand how things are related, draw, draw, draw. Now, this is an eyelid, and these are the layers of the eyelid. If you were just to look at a black and white version of this in a textbook, you couldn't really understand how these things are related until you draw it. Then you kind of have to know how these things are related. And if you color code them, it's even easier to separate the structures. So for anatomy and things like that, it's all about drawing. And uh, for me personally, I rewrite the notes because I just feel like when I write it, after I read it, it puts it like a deeper place in my brain. Writing things down also applies to those fact-based classes like, uh, like biochem. I actually do not recommend going through your PowerPoints and rewriting everything because it is just way too long. Uh, I actually recommend typing that all in your computer. But what I do recommend, and you can see in the back of my notebook, I just have 
Let's see, I've practiced writing the re urea cycle like three times already. This is me practicing meiosis and uh, mitosis. Um, I literally just take a pen and I just scribble, scrabble. Like, let's say I'm going over the elongation phase of RNA translation. I'll just rewrite that the elongation phase like three times. That's pretty much what the back of my notebook's for. Now, I personally love using Quizlet because it's like a, basically flashcards, except they're online. You can share them with whoever and you don't have to worry about where you left your flashcards or write any of them down. It's super fast, super easy, and it's a great way to learn really quick definitions. Now, when I was in high school and um, college, all of the information was on PowerPoint. So I just reviewed the PowerPoints but now that I'm in medical school, they give you questions over every lecture and they're called objectives and I answer them while I'm in class. And that way by the end of, it's, it's really long, by the end for the exam, I have all of the answers to all the questions they wanted me to know and I can review them all and um, test myself over them uh, while I study. Now one kind of interesting thing that I've always, always done is, um, I love to study with someone who wants to learn. You know what I mean? Like they didn't, haven't gone over the material or they like it when somebody teaches them. I feel like I get the material so much better in my head when I teach it. So I like to study with someone who wants someone to be taught the information, even if I don't know it that well. If I'm teaching it, actively trying to put it in words, it's like, it. If I can teach it, I understand it better, and I'm putting it in words indirectly for my own self to understand. But the case usually is I don't have anybody to study with. So what I do, and no lie, I've done this for years, I'll literally pretend, there's no one over here, I'll literally pretend I'm a teacher and I'm teaching to like an invisible classroom, and I'll just start like talking to nobody. I'll just be like, okay class, today we're gonna learn about hemoglobin. Did you know that all hemoglobin structures have a tertiary structure with seven helical regions? Whatever. I'll literally do that. I feel like actively talking, even, it's, if, it, even if it's to nobody or if it is to somebody, actively teaching it makes me understand it better. I feel like if you can teach it, you know it. And if you have no one to teach it to, make up someone to talk to. I know that's so weird. Please try it out though before you call me crazy because it, it, it really works for me. I don't think anything helps me more or has come more in handy during exams than like these acronyms. Is acronym the right word? I think it is. Or abbreviate, acronym, abbreviation, whatever. So molecular techniques for DNA detection. The southern blot detects DNA, the northern blot detects RNA, and the western blot detects protein. That honestly helps me memorize it and I can just remember Snowdrop, write it down for a test and I'm great. And there's so many different acronyms slash abbreviations for so many concepts in medicine and any type of science. You can even just make up an acronym. Now I'm going to lead you through an example of how I study. For this example, we're going to be talking about the cell because I think a lot of people know about the cell. So a, some of the objectives are super easy, like my light microscopy uses light and can be used on dead and alive specimens, while electron microscopy can only be used on dead specimens, whatever. That would be kind of something that I could just memorize because it's yeah, kind of easy. And then I, I've always known about the nucleus of the mitochondria. But let's say for things like the basophilic or base-loving stain includes the basic dye, hematoxylin, and stains acidic structures. That's something that I would probably make a flashcard for. Same with these different dyes, like a periodic acid shift reagent to dye polysaccharides, and osmium staining stains lipid structures. That's something that I could also use flashcards for. Or something that I could like quiz my friend over, and he would quiz me over until we both understood it. So basically, I would just go through this whole thing, making sure I know every detail for this exam. And all the harder parts, that I um, go over with flashcards, I go over with acronyms, I quiz my friends, and I talk to my anonymous audience, not my anonymous audience, my audience that doesn't even exist. And um, I just do it for the whole thing until I have touched every detail, and only until I've done that 
am I ready for the exam? And of course, make sure you have enough time because that can take a while. For anatomy, it's basically the exact thing, same thing. I'm gonna go over every single detail, except to kind of really uh, push these details inside my head. Instead of using flashcards, I draw things out because uh, a lot of things in anatomy aren't one or two sentence definitions. They're like giant concepts with intercalated or interrelated structures. And so when you draw things out, you're forced to understand the relations because you're actively putting them together. Now, last but not least, guys, test taking strategies. Um, so, I mean, obviously there's no questions like this, but during a multiple choice exam, which is basically every exam in medical school, you're gonna have choices that you know immediately are wrong. Like you know pen and light are not animals, just so you can cross them out. But then there's gonna sometimes be choices that you've never heard of, and then uh, it's gonna make you think that this is the right answer, you're just stupid and not the completely obvious one. I say always go with your gut. I mean, I, obviously guys, this is a really, really simplified version. I don't even know what a harsh dance is, I just made that up. Is that If that is an inappropriate phrase in a foreign language, I'm sorry, I just literally made it up. Cross out what you know is not the answer. If you went through every detail and not once did you ever hear the word or remember the word harsh dance, it's probably a made up phrase or a completely unrelated answer. So just go with your gut. Alrighty guys, that is everything. I didn't hold anything back. I told you all of my tricks, everything that I do for a test. And if any of them sound really awesome, leave it in the comments below. I hope that this video helps you out guys. I hope that you kind of remember it for your next, next exam and you ace it and you do super well and you follow your dreams. Uh, best of luck everybody and bye. Oh